Hey, hello everyone. Today I am back and I'm going to do a coaster countdown. This is uh, personally my top 10 roller coasters at Six Flags over Georgia. This is I went to this park in June and July this year, 2017, and I gotta say this park is amazing. They have a lot of shocking roller coasters. A lot of the rides like surprised me, and and this is my countdown. So I had some might be in popular opinions. I don't know, we'll see, everyone has their opinion, but I think this park has so many great coasters that everyone will have a different favorite, that's what I'd say, but anyways, let's start, number 10 is the Georgia Cyclone, personally one of the worst roller coasters I've ever ridden, this thing, this thing sucks, now it, it looked alright when I first saw it, and so, I mean, I don't hate this roller coaster, I don't hate it. The first drop is fun. It's not the first drop's not bad. It's just it's very rickety, but it definitely like once after the second drop, it just starts getting very messed up. It's a, it is such a messed up contraption in my opinion. It just it gets rougher and just rougher towards the end. Oh, I cannot believe how rough this thing is. Personally, one of the bumpiest rides I have ever ridden. There's definitely, there's rumors swirling around that this thing could be closing for an RMC, and I would not be surprised if Six Flags decides to RMC this roller coaster. If you saw from my um, recent video of me at Six Flags in July, I showed that there were markers on the um, footers in, um, on the supports for this roller coaster. Now, when I wrote it in July, I didn't think it was as bad, but still I, I thought it sucked entirely. I mean, it was a back row ride after all, but I just, I don't like this ride personally. I just, I hope it gets arm seed. Please arm seed it, please. Number nine was, is the Dalonega Mine Train. This one, the this one, I do think it's better than the Georgia Cyclone. It's, I personally take this over the Carolina Gold Rusher, but still, I don't really like this. It's kind of boring. I mean, the final drop is fun, but it's just, personally, um, I don't really love this ride. I mean, it definitely has like three lift hills. It's kind of like a, Six flat or like kind of like what you call a ghetto version of Big Thunder Mountain. It's not really ghetto. It's I mean it's a classic, but it's not that good of a ride. But it's is but I can't like down like I can't really like give this ride crap because it's a classic and it's a true original. Not the worst mine train I've ridden, but definitely not one of the best coaches I've ever ridden at all. It's just it's kind of okay in my opinion personally. Number eight is Blue Hawk. This one surprised me. I love this coaster personally. It's right now as of as I'm filming this right now. It's in my top three for Vacomas. I don't think it'll be in my top three longer though because I'll be riding Batwing. I'm expecting that to be like shoot up to number one. Personally, currently right now, I th of the ones I've written, I think Rock and Roller Coaster and Everest are better Vacomas than this, but. This is, this ride's great. Um, this one surprised me actually. I expected I expected it to be good, but not great. But I enjoyed it. It's intense. It it's smooth in my. I thought it was smooth for a Vacoma. I didn't think it was. I thought it was one of the. I think it's one of the smoother Vacomas. Surprisingly, I mean yes, my head was shaking around, but it wasn't like it was very. The head shaking was very gradual. It wasn't like like shaking like jostling me or anything. It was. This surprised me, I'm telling you. It's not that rough at all. And, I mean, yes, the transitions were on the rougher side, but but my one of my favorite things with this ride is that it is over water. And that's one of my favorite things with Blue Hawk. And this ride is just, it's an overall fun roller coaster. And I don't mind checking it out again if I go back to Six Flags. Definitely a ride that doesn't get enough credit. And number seven is the Great Mega Screeching. This ride does not deserve enough credit at all. This ride blew me away so much that I was literally coming off this ride speechless. I've, I mean, I've not done Phoenix at um in Knobles yet. I haven't ridden that, but this pretty much I, I think it felt like Phoenix. Maybe it's because I didn't um, tighten my seatbelt enough. I was literally standing up most of the ride because of how crazy the airtime was. It was such a fun roller coaster, in my opinion. This blew me away. And, yeah, I was literally speechless. I mean, the, I will say the transition to the brake run kind of sucked. It definitely slams you a bit. But, wow, this airtime is just airtime after airtime. It is so cool. I would definitely ride this ride again. It is awesome. 
And, I mean, yes, it's not smooth. I didn't think it was a smooth ride at all. It definitely was bumpy. But the thing why I love it so much is the airtime was in, I was insanely outstanding. Definitely a ride not talked about enough. Next up, we have the Daredevil Dive, the only Eurofighter Rin. This is actually the roller coaster that I rode for the first time. I got stuck on it. First time. It, it's Which, that's personally one of my favorite coaster moments ever. You can check that out in my Six Flags June 2016, 2017 vlog. Sorry. You can check out that one where I go with, during a mission trip. But this ride is great. I got, when, and I rode it again in July, and I did not get stuck. I got to fully experience it. I, mean, I had the credit anyways, but I um, now know more about this ride. This ride's great. It's smooth. It's fun. The airtime was crazier than expected. The, it was more intense than I expected, too. I had a lot more intensive a ride than I did in July than I did June. Also, the final version gives you some crazy hang time. And even, like, on the ride where I didn't get stuck, it actually, like, almost threw me on my seat. It was, um, it was just amazing. Also, the vertical lift hill is fun, too. Dale Devil Dive is just a fun roller coaster, in my opinion. It's not, I wouldn't say it's, like, top-notch, but it's fun. And then, now we're the top five, and this one shocked the living crap out of me. Mindbender. This ride is great. Now, this ride, it kind of looked like a toss-up. I remember, um, I, I did it for the first time, um, in June. This is one of the rides I did, and it blew me away. This ride blew my mind. Um, no wonder why it's called the Mind Bender. This thing is outstanding. It's surprisingly smooth for a Schwarzkopf. I mean, not, still not the smoothest ride. It's not going to be as smooth as, like, a B&M, but it wasn't rough or really jerky, like, like Scorpion. Um... But yeah, this ride, it's just the airtime was crazier than I expected. The loops were extremely forceful. And it's just overall a fun roller coaster that I would not mind checking out again. This is a fun ride. Number four is the Georgia Scorcher. Yet another coaster that blew me away. This thing is so fun. Holy crap. This ride, it is intense. It is Surprisingly smooth. I thought it was smoother than Vortex. Just, I love this roller coaster, and it, it's it's just this ride blew me away. I was I'm expecting it to be good, but not great. It was just awesome. I loved it. Definitely a ride I talked about enough, in my opinion. I would definitely ride this again if I had to. And Georgia Scorcher is just one of those coasters I just can't help but love. Def the slogan for this ride is put your feet to the fire and my feet literally felt like they're on fire on this ride that's because this thing is intense and that is what Georgia Scorcher is about now we're at the top three number three is Superman Ultimate Flight which is a park's flying coaster now I had I had a debate between this and the um, Georgia Scorcher in June I couldn't debate which one's better, but I think I like Superman better because I just, the, it's just all, I like flying coasters better than stand-up coasters, and this ride is pretty good overall. It is, um, I mean, the pretzel loop is pretty intense, nowhere near as intense as Manta. I did not black out on this coaster like I do on Manta, and, but this ride, it's still fun. It gives you that flying sensation. It does a very good job at it, but I will admit, it definitely was just a tad underwhelmed by Manta. I mean, Superman, sorry. This ain't no Stingray ride. This is a superhero ride, not Stingrays. But this ride is fun, though. I love this. I would recommend riding Superman rides. Uh, Superman Ultimate Flight. Plus, it got repainted this year, so it looks super nice. And, that, and that's Superman. Number two was another shocker. How many... Come on, Six Flags. How many rides are blowing me away here? Your park is so cool, Six Flags Over Georgia. This is Batman the Ride. I, both rides I did, both times I rode this, I was in the back row in both June and July. And this ride, personally, I say this is one of the most intense coasters ever. Holy crap. Little, when I rode in July, I actually blacked out. It was towards, like, the second, after the second vertical loop, I start, like, I literally blacked out, I swear. This ride, this ride is so crazy intense. This is just, it's just 
it's because compared to other inverse, it's not very spread out. It's just more compact. All the inverters like bang, 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 bang. It's kind of like invert. It's kind of like just as near as intense as Montu at Bush Gardens or Aftermarket Carowinds. This thing is forceful as heck. Also, it's smooth. Not the smoothest. It bangs around a little bit during the zero G roll, but. Holy crap, I love Batman the Ride, and I would not ride, mind um, riding the other clones in the other Six Flags parks in the future. These rides are just so much fun. If, you know, it pulls 4Gs, and, like, for example, compared to Hulk, which that also pulls 4Gs, you can feel it so well, like, oh, so much on this ride compared to Hulk. And my and the best coaster in the park is is Goliath, which this is the best coaster in the park by a long shot. This thing rocks. This is personally my number three coaster at the moment. And that's because this beat em hyper is incredible. If I had to like rate this on Logan Scream Skill, I'd give this a five plus. It is just original. I mean I mean beat em hypers aren't original models, but this thing is cool. It has air. The airtime is almost as good as Mako, in my opinion. Also, the helix is crazy awesome. I you literally start graying. I actually grayed out a little bit during the helix. It was amazing. The airtime is great. The um also the final airtime moments are amazing. Also, also I love the fact that you actually go outside of the park. That's one of my favorite things about this ride. I mean, the color scheme is definitely very faded. It's uh, definitely a little rattly, in my opinion. But that this ride, this is a kick butt roller coaster. Definitely one of my all time favorite roller coasters now. And that is it for this countdown. What are your top coasters in this park? I want to know for you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a theme tacular day.